Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us um, for the WIC MOU template post-release webinar. We are going to give it a couple of minutes um, as I am seeing the number continue to rise. Um, we appreciate um, the all of the attendees today and everybody's partnership on this MOU. So we'll give it just a, a couple of minutes and then we'll jump in and get started. Hello and welcome. My name is Alice and I'll be in the background answering any Zoom technical questions. If you experience difficulties during this session, please type your question into the chat field, which is located on the Zoom panel at the bottom of your screen. We encourage you to ask questions either by raising your hand or in the chat. With that, I'd like to introduce Amara, Branch Chief of Policy Utilization and External Relations in the Managed Care Quality and Monitoring Division at DHCS. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here today to talk a little bit more about the WIC MOU um, template and the edits that we made based on um, valuable feedback from all of you. So thank you so much for participating in that process. Um, we look forward to walking through um, our slide today and having a, a fruitful discussion regarding this MOU template. Um, so for today, we are going to um, review um, the WIC MOU template um, and the modifications that we made as a result of the feedback that you all provided. Um, then we'll provide a high-level overview of next steps for executing the MOU and the MOU execution timeline. And then we'll open it up for questions um, from all of you. So with that, um, we'll get started kind of covering um, the goals of the mem memorandums of understanding. Um, as many of you are aware, this is a very um, important and impactful effort. Um, the 2024 Medi-Cal Managed Care um, contract requires managed care plans to enter into MOUs with counties and third-party entities um, to, really to really provide that whole system person-centered care approach for members that are accessing multiple delivery systems. We understand that there's a lot of value to ensure that care is coordinated um, for these members. So we're really looking forward to this partnership and really um, supporting the execution of these MOUs. Um, some of the goals of the MOU is really set forth um, minimum requirements um, around some of the key contract provisions, such as training um, across the parties, um, data sharing really related to sharing um, minimum necessary information to support that care coordination. I'm um, really clarifying um, roles and responsibilities across the delivery system. So each party has an understanding of those responsibilities and can really ultimately support that member. It also establishes um, formal processes for how the MCPs and other parties will collaborate and coordinate on population health, health management programs, which you know, include um, linking members to those very important community supports also establishes on um, the data sharing pathways, which is really, um, you know, some of the foundation of really um, supporting the collaboration and partnership across these parties to ensure that members receive care coordination. There's also some areas that provide some over oversight and accountability for the MCPs um, to execute the MOUs, and then ultimately really providing um, transparency across the parties. We did just want to kind of call out that the MOU template really is incorporating um, existing policy requirements into a single document. It's not codifying new policy. Um, I know that that is, um, you know, we re some, received some feedback um, related to potential new policy development, um, which the department is taking into consideration. But we did just want to flag that really the intent of the MOUs is to codify existing policy, um, either by the department or the other party. So we wanted to kind of provide just a really quick update of how um, the WIC MOU really sits into a broader set of not only documents of the doc that the department has issued, but also um, a larger MOU effort, effort that the department has undertaken to really ensure that care is coordinated across multiple delivery systems, you know, really independent of WIC, including, you know, such programs as in-home supportive services, coordination with regional centers. So there's a variety of different entities that we're requiring the managed care plans to enter into um, relationships with. Um, so we issued an all plan letter um, to our managed care plans, which really provides guidance um, related to the intent and purpose of the memorandums of understanding, and then really setting forward some expectations related to monitoring and how DHCS will monitor and provide oversight 
of the memorandum of understanding. So super helpful tool. We'll provide a little a link later of some helpful tools and resources um, that everybody can reference um, if if they want to provide learn a little bit more about this effort. Um, we also issued a base MOU template, which really sets forward some of the key provisions that are located that are contained in all of the MOU. So really clarifying roles and responsibilities across the parties. Um, you know, establishing some optional provisions that may be included. Um, really the vision of this base MOU template was to set the foundation of what we're referring to as the bespoke MOU templates. In today's discussion, that would be in reference to um, the WIC MOU template. Um, so the base MOU template is really just setting that foundation and then also gives the managed care plans an option if they wanna, you know, execute an MOU, they can use this base MOU template to execute an MOU for uh, a program that maybe we didn't issue a template for. Um, and then we get more into um, the, today's discussion, which is related to the, the bespoke MOU templates. Um, and then for today, we're in reference to the WIC MOU. So it really contains general and program specific information um, related to pr specific provisions, um, uh, such as, you know, referrals across parties and um, what's what's actually um, contained under each of the MOUs. So um, that's where you'll really find more of the program specific requirements. So as I had mentioned, um, we, we do have a number of helpful resources that are available on this um, DHCS MOU website that we have created that houses the all plan letter that we issued 23029. It contains that base MOU template and then it contains all of the bespoke MOU templates. We also have uh, issued a very robust uh, memorandum of FAQ um, that really provides um, a lot of uh, responses to questions that we've received throughout the stakeholder um, comment period across all of the memorandum of understanding. So very helpful tool. There's about 16 pages of information there and it's uh, very simple and easy to use. So we would recommend if you have questions, please reference that tool. Um, we also have been issuing other updates as they become available, such as, you know, when we'll be hosting um, webinars related to these topics, webinars that we've hosted in the past. Um, so feel free to keep an eye on that website um, to um, find any um, additional updates as they become available. And then also DHCS will continue to provide technical assistance as needed to really support the execution of these MOUs. Um, we have also issued um, this uh, MCP MOU at DHCS inbox. So please feel free if you have questions that arise that are not addressed in the FAQ or the all plan letter, please feel free to submit those directly to us so that we can um, provide um, some technical assistance to resolve and address any questions that you may have throughout this process. We can, um, I think, I believe I saw RF drop those in the chat. If not, he will be dropping those in the chat and you'll be able to reference those very valuable and helpful resources. So just to kind of give um, a little bit more um, of an understanding of kind of the WIC MOU, um, which really seeks to improve um, care coordination between the managed care plans and the WIC agencies, um, really opening those channels of communication regarding the roles and responsibilities of each party, and really um, ensuring that there is that local level um, of coordination. As we know and have learned throughout this process, there are nuances at the local level so really understanding those local nuances are, is really important to ensure that there is adequate um, care coordination. Um, and it's also really enhancing each other's party's understanding, right? To ensure that that member can get access um, to the services that they need. So really um, enhancing the understanding, what's the managed care plan's role and what's the WIC agency's role. So um, as you all are probably aware and hopefully participated in the stakeholder feedback process, we did issue the MOU template for stakeholder comments. We received about 132 comments during the feedback period. Um, we have reviewed those comments and addressed those comments and made appropriate revi revisions um, to the MOU as a result of that feedback. So we really wanna thank you. And then we also um, want to thank our partners at CDPH and also SHIAC who have consistently engaged with us um, to ensure that the MOU template was updated and, and reflected you know, appropriately to meet the needs of all parties involved in this. So we really truly appreciate that partnership and engagement to um, create uh, this MOU template. So thank you to all parties involved, uh, our stakeholders and CDPH and also SHIAC. 
So we wanted to just kind of give you a high level overview of the base MOU um, template requirements, which are contained in the WIC MOU. Um, so there are a, is a specific section related to definitions, which um, contains some of the definitions that are related in the MOU. A, a many of the definitions are also contained in the managed care contract, which will be publicly available um, in, in the coming month. Um, however, that is not available right now, but some of those divine terms are in the FAQ. So did just want to kind of call that out. Also, um, we have a section related to the services covered by the MOU, um, each party's obligation, really a robust um, training and education section, which requires the MCP to provide education to members and network providers about the covered services of the other party services available. So really enable that care coordination. Um, also, we included a referral section um, to really outline the referral pathways across the parties also includes a, um, a quarterly meeting section, which requires the parties to meet um, at least quarterly to address the, the care court and any concerns that may come up and really identify um, uh, the ability to improve processes um, to really support member um, coordination. There's also a quality improvement project pro uh, section that closely relates to what I had just reviewed and covered as well. Um, another area that is in each of the MLU templates is data sharing and confidentiality, which really requires um, the MCPs to have policies and procedures to ensure that minimum data and information necessary to in ensure that the MLU requirements are met, but also, you know, comply with um, state and federal laws. So um, there is, you know, a robust section on that. And then also the dispute resolution, which describes, you know, the, the steps that would be taken if a dispute does arise. Um, equal treatment section that requires, uh, that notates that nothing in this MOU is intended to benefit or prioritize um, Medi-Cal members. And then some general provisions related to um, contract requirements um, that we've placed on the managed care plans, such as the managed care plan publicly posting the executed MOU on their website, um, the annual review process, and then notating that the MOU cannot be delegated. So what have we changed as a result of um, the valuable feedback that we received? So we were, we've made some revisions um, to the training and education requirement section. One of the common themes that we, we received um, throughout the stakeholder comment per period was there are some opportunities to improve the coordination for the therapeutic formula. So we have included um, you know, a specific section um, related to the, the therapeutic formula training and education around this as we, we identified that there's a lot of opportunities um, to provide you know, clarification on roles and responsibilities across the parties um, for therapeutic formula to really improve the member experience. Um, we've also included some um, revisions related to um, lactation consultant service, services and other breastfeeding support services that um, are available that the MCPs must provide. Um, in addition, we've made some um, changes to the referral requirements um, specific to um, some of the requirements that are necessary um, for referrals, such as you know the member's name, address, and then uh, relevant portions of the medical record to really support that referral. And we've made some other provisions related to some Im sharing of immunization records. In addition, as I had um, referenced earlier, we did receive, you know, a number of um, comments related to the therapeutic formula and the coordination on that. So we did make some um, pretty major revisions to this section to reflect um, some specific processes related to the coordination of care for this. Um, therapeutic formula is carved out of the managed care plan's responsibilities and is provided by um, the by Medi-Cal Rx. So we've made some updates to the provisions to really reflect that and reflect um, that the responsibility of Medi-Cal Rx to cover those services. And if those services are not covered by Medi-Cal Rx, that there would be um, coordination with the WIC agency to provide those services. So you'll see those changes reflected um, throughout. We had many robust conversations with our partners in pharmacy benefits that supports Medi-Cal Rx and also with SHEAC to update these provisions um, to really support that care coordination for members that are receiving these services. Um, we've also made some other changes to um, the care coordination section 
Um, one specific requirement related to the population health management requirements, which in order for MCPs to ensure members have access to Medi-Cal for kids and teens um, benefits and perinatal services, the, the MCP must coordinate with the agency as necessary. So we did make some um, modifications to that area and section. Um, we also made some modifications to the maternity and pediatric care coordination requirements um, related to implementing um, processes to coordinate with WIC participants on um, certain areas. So made some um, pretty robust changes in that area as well. Um, and then we made some slight modifications in the quarterly monitoring, monitoring section to again um, address some of those barriers and issues that may be identified um, in the therapeutic formulas, topics of discussion to really coordinate um, across the parties. All right, next moving on the MOU execution timelines. Um, so we will notate um, the MOU template was released a little bit later than we had it originally anticipated um, being released in the, in the middle of January. As a result of that, we have um, implemented a process for the managed care plans to demonstrate a good faith effort to execute the MOU by January 1st, 2024. Um, we understand the release of that template has delayed the execution. Um, however, you know, we really anticipate the MCPs and the WIC agencies to build those relationships and partnerships and start discussing the MOU template that has been released. Um, we have put a um, good faith effort um, quarterly reporting template in place that the managed care plans will be submitting to us. The first, uh, the second one will be due actually um, in late April. We have already received a template related to the other MOUs that um, we have released and issued the other MOU templates that we've uh, issued. So we anticipate we'll continue to monitor um, the execution of these MOUs um, through the end of the year using this quarterly reporting template. And here's the timeline here. Alrighty, well, that um, is kind of the, the brunt of the conversation that we've prepared for you. However, we wanna open it up. Um, we understand that you all may have some um, questions um, related to some of the changes that were implemented and really wanted to make sure that we could have a, a robust conversation today if you have questions um, and really make sure that we support, um, you know, the execution of these MO MOUs. All right, let me look at the chat. If you have questions, feel free to also raise your hand um, and we will be um, taking some questions. All right, so I see um, one note that I want to make sure that we address. It, it sounds like there has been some questions on um, the requirements to enter into MOUs. So the, the managed care plans are required to enter into MOUs um, with the, the WIC agencies that are within their service area. Um, and so we would, you know, really anticipate and expect that there would be collaboration and engagement on those MOUs. Um, so we did just wanted to provide um, that clarification. If your WIC program is part of a local health department, can this MOU be part of the larger MOU that the LHD have to sign or does it have to be separate? That's a great question. Um, we are encouraging where appropriate um, for uh, the managed care plans and the counties to collaborate and coordinate to determine where there may be opportunities to combine MOUs. Um, so that is absolutely something that we would encourage if it's appropriate. Um, we understand that there are nuances at the local level, um, which is why you know we've issued these templates independent of one another. However, we would encourage them to be combined if that really um, fits your local structure and needs. So there's absolutely no concerns and BHCS supports that um, to really, um, you know, ultimately reduce the the burden and review of those MOU templates. Um, I, it, it's just important to make sure that all the appropriate people at those local agencies are included in the discussion regarding the execution of the MOU. And then I saw a question related to, will the deck be shared for participants? And I saw RF was able to drop the deck in the chat for all of you. Oh, it looks like there's some trouble opening it. So um, if, if, 
if you aren't able to open it and get it, we'll make sure that um, you receive a copy of the deck. Um, it will also be posted online in the future. So we will make sure that that is available. We were going to be supplied with contact name and email phone numbers for health plans in our counties. So um, we did receive some contact information from some of our health plans and we did um, pass that information forward. Um, however, um, I know that we are, we are still working with our managed care plans to receive a complete list. Um, Mary, if you want to um, send our inbox and an email um, and let us know what county you're in and we can um, make sure that you get and put in contact with the appropriate person at the managed care plan. We do want to make sure that we are assisting that. Um, and maybe your managed care plan is on the call today. So it, you might even be able to just drop your county in the chat and or come off mute and um, they may be able to assist you today. Hi, this is Kim Fritz from Blue Show Promise. And, uh, I work with Mary. And we will be collaborating with all the health plans. So Mary will have those contacts soon once we start meeting. Thank you so much. We appreciate that, Kim. Sure. All right. If you don't get contact by the MCP, who should we contact? So I, I would say, you know, give it a little bit of time. We did just release the template and we um, anticipate that it might be a, a little bit of time before the managed care plan reaches out. If you don't get contacted, um, and, and you aren't able to locate that resource on your own, please feel free to send an email to the MCP MOU inbox and we can um, put you in contact with the appropriate party. So thank you so much. It, it's great to see the enthusiasm um, and the managed care plans can ultimately see, you know, um, the WIC agencies are really enthusiastic to move forward with these discussions um, and, and really move forward with the execution of these MOUs. So it's exciting to see. Has this MOU template been reviewed by legal on the WIC side? Yes, um, our, we have been working in close partnership with um, our partners at CDPH. Um, Christine, I don't know if, if you want to come off mute and address that or if you would prefer for me to take yeah. that question. Okay, go ahead, thank no, you. No, that's fine. I added a quick reply to that one comment. So yes, um, this is Chris from CDPH WIC. Our legal team has been very, very involved in this. Um, but also your local agency legal should review as well. Great, thank you so much. All right, I see another question. Are WIC agencies required to enter into MOUs with MCPs? So there is not currently a requirement on the WIC agencies. We are um, you know, encouraging that relationship as we identify that there really are a lot of opportunities to, to support member um, engagement and collaboration. And so ultimately that the requirement is on the managed care plan, although we are strongly encouraging um, that the WIC agencies um, move forward with discussions related to execution of the MOU. And Christine, I don't know if you have anything else you wanna add on that front and or SHIAC. Oh, thank you. So it's not part of the state contract with local agencies for this specific MOU, but there is there certainly are requirements for you to partner with um, health providers and community providers within your area as well. So this is a great opportunity um, to facilitate that. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate um, the assistance. Um, and I see there is another question. There are agencies with the same geo area. Is the MOU exclusive to certain agencies who decide to sign the MOU um, with the MCP? Um, so this is something that we would encourage to be really sorted out kind of at the local level of uh, engagement where there may be multiple WIC agencies involved um, and really working and partnering together, the WIC agencies and also the managed care plans that are in that area and to determine kind of the best path forward if it makes sense for, you know, there to be a master MOU um, that the parties are signing on or, you know, if it makes sense to have them separate, it really kind of depends on the local structure, which is why we've, you know, left it um, a little bit more high level to understand that there are, you know, a number of nuances at the local level, whether, you know, the WIC agency is, you know, within the local health department or if it's independent or, you know, understanding that there are a lot of nuances. Um, so ultimately, you know, working um, with your partners, um, we would that's what we would encourage to really determine 
um, how to move forward with executing the MOU. And then I see how does this work with F um, QHCs within different departments um, outside of the WIC who may also sign. Um, so you know, ultimately, again, that 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 goes back to kind of that local level coordination. Um, repercussions for MCPs if the WIC agencies choose to not enter. You know, ultimately, the um, the department is going to be monitoring that good faith effort, and so. The managed care plans are going to be, you know, reporting to us where they would be um, engaging and collaborating with the WIC agencies. And if there are challenges, the managed care plan would be letting the department know where there may be challenges. But ultimately, you know, the intent is to really support that e execution and really support that collaboration, you know, to ensure that that these Medi-Cal members are supported um, when accessing services in different delivery systems. All right, I see um, Sydney on slide 12, one of the bullets says agency may advise MCP when WIC participants who are members need lactation support services. MCPs must arrange for breastfeeding peer, peer counseling services. Does this mean that the MCP will have both lactation services and peer counselor services? Agency. So the MCP must arrange for them. Now, whether those services are offered by the managed care plan, I can't speak to that level of detail. I don't know, Marissa, if you have anything additional to add on that piece. Or if Kim has anything additional to add. Yeah, we may need to take this back. I think it depends on the plan and the county and whether there are peer support services available. And so we would have to... Um, It'd probably be a, a geographic specific. Great, thank you. If we already have an MOU with one MCP partnership and now have to add MOU with KP, do we need to replace the original MOU with partnership with whatever we put in place with Kaiser? Um, so we are you know, expecting that the MOU templates that we issued uh, would be the MOUs that would be MOU templates that would be executed. Um, therefore, you know, we would really anticipate that that MOU with partnership would be updated. Um, now there may be nuances where the MOU with partnership may be different than the MOU with Kaiser. I'm gonna, you know, ultimately that is going to need to be sorted out between the, the conversations between the managed care plan and the WIC agencies, you know, really at that local level, if there's, you know, nuances um, that need to be um, contained in the MOU kind of differently, depending on um, the relationship with the parties. Um, can you encourage both MCP and WIC to share link WIC websites and social media so MCP clients will be aware of WIC before being referred? I, I think that's, you know, a, a great, Point. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the intent of the MOU is to, to make sure that um, the parties are sharing the resources on the services that are covered. Um, and so, you know, that would be, you know, included in those conversations and discussions, right, to make sure that those valuable resources are shared um, so that the, the clients know what's available to them. Wait, I see another question. In Sacramento County, there are two WIC agencies, Sacramento County PH and Community Resource Project WIC. Do we need to execute the WIC MOU agreement with CRP? Um, would you be able to come off mute? Um, what, when you say CRP, oh, are you talking about Community oh, Resource right. Project? Yeah, Correct. Yeah. Sorry. For okay. Sorry. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, ultimately that, that expectation would be for you to execute MOUs with the, the two WIC agencies. Now, whether that would be one MOU or a different MOU, uh, separate MOUs, um, I think that's where, you know, there may be nuances at the local level. It, it's a great question. And I apologize if that was not clear. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. That helps me. I appreciate it. Right, lots of great questions today. We really appreciate that. Um, let me see, does anyone have their hand raised by chance or any additional questions? 
Hi, um, my name is Kiran Saluja. I work with WIC in LA County. I'm one of seven WIC programs here. And of course, uh, we have moved from two managed care plans to many more. In the past, what we have done is that the seven big agencies, we work very collegially. We usually get together at least once a month. We've had one MOU with seven signature lines. And I'm just putting that out there because I know we have more managed care entities in the LA County area. I'm not going to speak for my other WIC directors, but I know I don't want to have to, you know, do something with everybody all the time. We would just really appreciate if we could move towards something that's fairly streamlined, that we can get, you know, one template for each of the managed care that all of us could sign. And again, like I said, if others in LA County have other opinions, I'm happy to hear those, but I just want to put it out that that's sort of the best way to do it. Thanks. Thank you for putting that out there. We we absolutely support and appreciate that. The one item that we will um, flag is that there will need to be a way to ensure that um, there still can be uh, that close knit group and collaboration to share, you know, when there are specific care coordination issues um, that, you know, there is appropriate sharing of PHI across the groups. And so I would say um, just take that into consideration when um, you're looking at, you know, that the quarterly meetings and engagement and what that would look like. Um, so that that would be the piece of consideration. Um, but we the department does um, support the execution of, you know, multi party MOUs, um, as we understand that it could be, you know, burdensome to execute the MOUs. And ultimately, we want to streamline it as much as we can. And then I see a, a question in the chat. Um, is it is your name Kiran? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, yes. perfect. Yeah, HealthNet's asking if you would be the the point contact um, for MOU discussions. Um, for I'm happy to do help out here. Uh, yes. Thank okay, you. great. Thank I you, put my Kate. email in here. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate that we're already seeing collaboration and coordination. So thank you so much. Um, which is the latest version of the MOU template? And any day to identify it in the DHCS website. So the I'll drop the website in the chat. Um, and the WIC template that is the newest is on that website, which I will also drop in the chat. Um, so that you have that available to you. I see some additional sharing. Um, as I reread the revised MOU, sorry, it's a little hard to, and taking into account Karan's comment, another difference is to consider is the parent administrator, county, nonprofit, FQHC, et cetera, the MOU may not be a one size fits all. And that, yes, we are absolutely acknowledging that um, and understanding that there, there may need to be nuances at the local level. So ultimately, you know, um, that's where that partnership and collaboration and understanding of that local structure is really important. Oh, Rahini, any other questions? This is Gail. I am in Southern California. I'm in Riverside County. And uh, unlike Quran, we have only two WIC agencies in uh, Riverside County. One, uh, Riverside County covers all clients except for in San Bernardino, Riverside Indian Health. So we were looking at doing individual contracts because we're two separate WIC agencies and working with the health plan. So um, thank you for the opportunity to either do Karan's route or to do something similar to us. So I appreciate that. Absolutely, and thank you for sharing. It's good to, to hear, you know, different um, areas are taking different approaches. I, I just, I, I understand there's a lot of managed care folks on. So I just want to make a quick comment from the WIC perspective. I've worked in WIC a very long time. Managed care has been around for a very long time. Uh, we were here when it all started. Uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we are not just signing a piece of paper, but that we're really coming to the table with a commitment to the actual spirit of the MOU because this is a new age, I understand. So I'm not gonna look backwards, I'm gonna look forwards. But some of these things, the therapeutic formula and breastfeeding support, we really need uh, the managed care providers to help wick out 
in how we can coordinate so much better. And I'm optimistic with the language, but I just wanted to put this out that we've got to go so much beyond the language. We've got to make the language come to life. And what do we do? I mean, I like that I have a place I could send comments to, but I don't want to have to send comments. I just want to have to send kudos and adulations with how well this is working out. So I'm coming in with, you know, positivity. And I hope that uh, I will feel the same way at the end of the year as I do now. Thank you so much. And, and I, you know, what you're highlighting is in, very important. And um, also, you know, why we've um, also initiated that good faith effort at the department level to, you know, really give um, the managed care plans and the WIC agencies that time to really form those valuable relationships to really effectuate, like you said, the goals of the MOU. So I, I truly appreciate hearing that from the local level. And I, I also want to acknowledge, um, you know, the the changes with Medi-Cal RX have, um, have clearly caused some confusion in the therapeutic formula realm um, regarding some roles and responsibilities. And so we are working in partnership with Medi-Cal RX um, to make sure that some of that confusion has been clarified um, because there has been, you know, a number of changes that have been made that are really outside um, the control of managed care plans that are really, you know, related to some of the changes um, regarding Medi-Cal RX. And um, we are also um, working, you know, in partnership to address some of those concerns as well, um, as that was, you know, a consistent theme that we saw um, regarding um, this MOU template is really the coordination um, not just between the WIC agencies and the managed care plans, but also Medi-Cal RX. So I um, just want to notate that as well. So um, thank you. I, I appreciate um, that feedback. Anything else? This has been a, a very fruitful conversation um, throughout this entire stakeholder engagement process. We've you know, really appreciated the passion um, from the WIC agencies and also the engagement um, also, um, really appreciate all of our partners. Um, we've been able to collaboratively partner with CDPH and also SHIAC. And so I think throughout this entire process, we've already, you know, shared the value of collaboration um, across the parties and look forward to seeing, you know, the how um, the, the conversations really support the members moving forward. So thank you so much. And I'm seeing some additional feedback and it's really great to get, you know, the managed care plans and also the WIC agencies together on one call. So, um, you know, everybody can hear each other's perspectives and um, really, you know, put forward the goals of these MOUs. So thank you all for joining us. If there's no additional questions, um, we will end the webinar and we appreciate the, the fruitful conversation today. Thank you very much for hosting this. It was really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you very much.